leader grow the ministry the leader who stops learning stops growing if you stop growing you stop leading you must therefore stay informed in order to remain relevant i say your purpose in god is greater than your past mistakes so your past mistakes are not big enough to cancel your destiny in god i pray that your effort will be blessed by god i pray that God will indeed bring great multiplication to what you are doing. This message will put you on the cutting edge of effective and result-oriented ministry. As you watch Dr. John Akwami on leadership, your life and ministry will experience exponential growth and accelerated progress. Welcome to Leadership with Dr. John Akwami. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. I really appreciate the privilege you are giving to me to come to your living room uh, on today's telecast. I'm trusting that this series on leadership will be of tremendous blessing to you and to your ministry. I've been discussing on certain costly mistakes we should avoid as leaders. I'm going to continue the series today. Let's pray before we go into the discussion. Father Lord, we Thank you because we can always count on the Holy Spirit to be our helper. Lord, I ask that he helps me to speak as I ought to, grant me utterance, and grant all my viewers uh, understanding. Thank you for imprinting reality upon the fleshy tablets of our hearts. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Once again, the Lord bless you. I appreciate it your being part of today's program. Now, we've been discussing on some mistakes that could cost you your leadership effectiveness. And we've got to avoid those mistakes. Not all mistakes are expensive, but certain mistakes could cost you your ministry. And you do not want to make such mistakes. We've said that number one, uh, you do not want to allow your intimacy with people to begin to affect your intimacy with God. That is quite costly. And then secondly, we said, as a leader, you must never lose your aggressive pursuit of knowledge. What keeps you ahead as a leader is that you stay informed. You stay current. You do not want to relax your pursuit for knowledge. Because as a leader, it's expected that you see better, you see further, or the ignorant leading the ignorant. It's commonly said that an ignorant man that feeds at the table of an ignorant teacher <laughs> will remain ignorant, or an ignorant teacher that teaches ignorant people uh, will have people that will be ignorant. That's why we don't want to lose our aggressive pursuit on knowledge. Now, the third mistake that you must avoid as a leader, as a minister, is the mistake of placing people in positions of authority in your church or giving them titles just to pacify them. That's a big mistake. To ordain people, to put them in leadership position simply because you want to pacify them is a mistake you must avoid as a leader. Now, the simple reason for this is you don't know people well. It takes time to know people. So to hurriedly lay hands on people and ordain them and put them in a position of authority when you do not know them well is a mistake. The Bible says you should not be hasty in laying hands on people because people that you give titles to that you don't know very well could use those titles against you in the future. People that you give power to, that you place in position of authority, could eventually use that position against you. I want to emphasize it again. It takes time to know people. So you don't give people power when you do not know them well. You don't know a humble man. You don't know a submissive person until you put power in his hands. When you place them in those positions of authority, their true color emerges. That's why you take time to prove people, to test people, 
to test their allegiance before putting power in their hands. It's a big mistake to simply give somebody a position of authority in your church to pacify him. Maybe the, the person maybe has some influence in the society or the person has money or the person is well-to-do in the society. That doesn't necessarily mean he'll be a good material in your church or in your ministry. Take time to know people. Take time to test people before you place them in position of authority. I have seen it happen over and over again. People, leaders that are in regret because they ordained people that they do not know or they gave position of authority to people that were strangers. It takes time to know people. And somebody that just came to your church, uh, stayed there for one year, for two years, and then you now make him director of finance. Now, it's in place for you to give people responsibilities. That's how you help them to prove their faithfulness. Give them responsibilities and see how well they do. You can, for instance, make somebody to be in charge of your money, to be a treasurer for a while. But in a church that is just one year old, two years old, you make somebody director of finance. You don't know that person well. That person could turn out to be a rebel. And I want to say, when he turns out and shows his true color, if you remove him from that position, it may cause a split in your church. Take time to know people, just like Jesus did. Uh, in John chapter, chapter, not John, no, Mark, excuse me, Mark chapter, chapter 4, Mark chapter 3 rather, Mark chapter 3. Now this is how Jesus chose the team he walked with. John chapter 3, verse 13, and he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. And they came to him. Then he appointed twelve that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. Now notice verse 14. He appointed twelve that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. One version says, the New Living Translation says, he called, appointed 12 to be his regular companions. To be his regular companions. Now that's important. He called them so that they would first be his regular companions before he could send them out to represent him. Now, when somebody is a regular companion, it's a person who knows you well, knows what you stand for, knows what you believe, knows what you don't like, know your likes and your dislikes. That's a regular companion. It's after somebody has become a regular companion that you can entrust uh, sensitive responsibilities or assignments in their hands. Jesus did not send out complete strangers to represent him. He didn't send out strangers to uh, extend his ministry. The people Jesus sent out were his regular companions, those that ate with him, that slept with him, that fed from his table. He had opportunity of influencing them, of changing their minds, changing their attitudes, changing their beliefs, getting them to know what he knows, getting them to talk like he talked, getting them to believe what he believed, getting them to carry his spirit. Those were the ones Jesus sent out to represent him. So, dear leader, don't lay hands on people and give them positions just to pacify them, just to make them feel happy because they can use those titles to tie you down, use those titles to oppose you in ministry. I've seen it happen several times. And once somebody manifests a rebellious spirit and you want to discipline that person, 
already is gaining influence in your church and it could cause a split. Always remember that no matter how gifted somebody is, no matter how talented he is, no matter how anointed he is, if he is a rebel, if he is not submissive, that gift will never be a blessing to your church. A gifted rebel is still a rebel. And a gifted rebel is not an asset. A talented, unsubmissive member in your church is not a blessing. It's not a blessing. He will not be a blessing to that church. In other words, a blessed person will not be a blessing to your church without submissiveness. And I've gone through the Holy Scriptures. I've discovered that it's important for you to prize loyalty above giftings. It's important. It's important for you to prize character above charisma. If somebody has charisma but lacks character, he could use that charisma to ground your ministry. So you've got to watch it. Watch people who are flamboyant, but they will not pay allegiance to you. Jesus one day asked Peter in John chapter 21, after he had risen from the dead, you, you remember Peter had denied him three times. So Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? The first time he asked me, asked Peter, he said, do you love me more than these? Lovest thou me more than these? And Peter said, Master, you know I love you. Jesus told him, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Do you love me more than these? And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. Now, people that should feed your sheep, that should walk in your church, should be people who love you beyond the titles. Love you above the limelight, above maybe the, 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 the privilege of, of carrying titles. If they do not love you, the set man, they do not love you, the senior pastor, more than they love the job of being an usher, can I say to you that their effectiveness in your ministry will be limited? Here is a portion of scripture I want you to remember. In John chapter 12. In John chapter 12 verse 26. Jesus said, If anyone serves me, let him follow me me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him will my father honor. Now, can you see the way the Lord Jesus puts it beautifully? If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. In other words, if you want to serve me, First, follow me. You want to serve in my ministry? You want to serve in my church? First, follow me. What comes first is not service. It's followership. Followership should always supersede service. That means people who are not willing to follow you will not serve you effectively. People who are not willing to bond with you will not be too useful when it comes to building your ministry. Bonding comes ahead of building the work. There is a synergy, a knitting of hearts. People who carry your spirit are those that will be useful in extending your ministry. That's why it's vitally important you don't make the mistake of ordaining people, of laying hands on them, giving them big titles when you've not taken time to know them and to prove them and to test them. For instance, I as a person, if you don't believe in me and believe in my calling and believe in my vision and you believe that it's God that sent me, why do I appoint you as a house leader? Because obviously it's going to affect your effectiveness. If the person you are following is one great preacher 5,000 miles away, 
That's the person you are paying allegiance to. Why should you serve in my church as an associate pastor? Obviously, you will introduce a different spirit. A different spirit. I didn't say a wrong spirit, but a different spirit. And a different spirit in a church or in a ministry will slow that work down. If you bring in an attitude or a spirit different from the culture that is within that organization, it's going to slow down that work. So I want to repeat again. Followership comes ahead of service. Jesus said, if you want to serve me, follow me. Believe in me first. Identify with me. Be my regular companion before serving me. If you are not ready to do that, it may do you well to take your service elsewhere. Very few things can slow a ministry down than having people in position of authority that are rebels at heart. People that do not believe in you. People who see differently from you. People that have their own agenda, like Absalom. They are in your midst for self-service, for what they can get for themselves. A lot of these people that are running around you are just simply looking for opportunity to be given the platform so that they can showcase what they have. And the moment you give them that opportunity, their true color images. It's important you only ordain tested hands. Train people. Those that you've had opportunity of pouring your life into, they are the assets for your ministry. Now, the truth under heaven is this. The future of your ministry is not in properties. It's not in the structure. The future of your ministry is in people. The future of every ministry is in people. Those are the ones that will extend your grace, that will replicate your grace, that will carry your anointing or your vision or your message far beyond the coast of where you are. But only trained people, tested people, people that have imbibed your spirit, those are the valuable assets that will help extend your ministry. Now, bear that in mind so that you do not reap a harvest of regrets by using hands that you've not tested. So one mistake you should avoid as a leader is the mistake of appointing people, putting them in positions of responsibility when they are complete strangers. You don't know them well. I said it before, I'll say it again. You don't know a humble person until he handles power. You don't know a submissive person until you give him a title or you place him in a position of authority. Followership should always come ahead of service. In Luke chapter 16, Luke chapter 16, the New Living Translation reads, verse 10, unless you are faithful in small matters, you won't be faithful in large ones. If you cheat, even in a little, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. Have you seen that? So you use small things to test people. You use little assignments to test people's faithfulness. The person who disappoints you in little matters will also disappoint you in big matters. For instance, if somebody cannot faithfully follow up one new convert, one new convert, somebody cannot faithfully follow up that one new convert, why do you now go ahead and appoint that person as the leader of the follow-up team? Now, if he disappoints you in little matters, you can be sure he will disappoint you in large matters. If someone, for instance, cannot faithfully uh, lead a house cell. You put a house cell in his hands and that house cell eventually dies or reduces in number. Why do you now make that person as a house cell pastor to now coordinate the house cell ministry? Obviously, that house cell ministry is going to suffer severe setbacks. Use little matters to test people's faithfulness. Use little assignments 
to judge what people will do if you put large assignments in their hands. If they disappoint you in small matters, they will equally disappoint you in big matters. Now, that's a scripture that is almost a law. It came from the lips of Jesus that you use little matters to test people's faithfulness. It's a big mistake not to use little things to test people's faithfulness. If you overlook the lapses of people in small matters, it will cost you a lot in ministry. I think uh, I've been around long enough to make some statements with some degree of authority. I know that what will test people's faithfulness in big matters is to use little, little things to test them. If you begin to notice lapses in allegiance in small matters, <laughs> I can predict that when you put big issues in the hands of those people, they will betray you. So before they cause you grievous pains as a result of betrayal, as a result of disappointment, use small, small matters to test their faithfulness. Jesus said, he that is faithful in the least will be faithful also in the much. So watch for faithfulness. Watch for dependability. Watch out for submission in small matters. Let me repeat a statement I made earlier. If somebody is a rebel in attitude, if he's unsubmissive, the gifts that he has, the talents that he has, will not be a profit to your church. If anything at all, he may use those gifts to slow your work down. He may influence people in your church. When you give him that position of authority, he may influence people to stand against you. When God was telling Moses to raise leaders that will stand with him and help him carry the burden of the ministry, the Lord made a statement that he should appoint those leaders to stand with him. Leaders that will stand with him, not stand afar off, not stand aloof, not stand against him, but those that will stand with him. Those are the ones he was to lay hands on to transfer his spirit and his grace upon. People that will stand with the leader, not stand against the leader, those are the ones we need because a rebel, even if he's anointed or gifted, is still a rebel and he will use his gift against you. I often say if somebody has ability but is not available, he's not available because he doesn't believe in you, he doesn't pitch his allegiance with you. If he has ability but lacks availability, he will turn out to be a liability. That is a general rule. People that have ability, but they are not available. They always have excuses for why they would not be submissive or why they would not give in their best or throw their weight into the work. Such people end up becoming liabilities. And you don't want liabilities in ministry. Don't be taken away by a person simply because he's well connected or because he has money or because he knows people. And he's, he's, he's highly respected in the society. What he is outside could be different from what he contributes to your church. Submissiveness, followership, obedience comes ahead of gifting. Comes ahead of whatever position the person or the influence the person may have in the society. So appoint leaders or ordain leaders that are loyal. Let me read this to you. The people you should surround yourself with, the people you should surround yourself with as a leader, and you know it's commonly said that you can never rise beyond the people that are in your inner circle. Those that you surround yourself will affect how far you go in ministry. So who do you surround yourself with? Those who are loyal, not just those who are talented. Those who have character, 
not just those who possess charisma. Those who display the fruit of the Spirit. Not just those who display the gifts of the Spirit. Those who recognize and submit to your authority as a set man or as a set leader. Those who recognize and submit to your authority. Now, those who project and protect you, the leader, not those who project themselves. Not those, just those who are looking for the opportunity to be given the platform so that they can showcase themselves. Look for those who would protect you, the leader, those who would project the vision, the overall vision, not just their self-interest. Surround yourself with people who project the overall vision of the team, the overall vision of the ministry, not just those who love publicity, who love the limelight, those who are looking for opportunity to project their pet visions. If you make the mistake of bringing into your inner circle people that are not seeing what you are seeing, they become a serious distraction in ministry. So look for those who would project the overall vision of the group, of the team. Not just those who love publicity, those who love titles, those who love positions of authority. You do not know people well until you put power in their hands or you give them authority. So look for those. Surround yourself with people who would rather be number two in God's plan than scheme to be number one in their own plan. People who will be contented serving God wherever God placed them, not those who are hunting for the limelight. Because I tell you something, the way God rewards people is based not on the titles they carry, but on their faithfulness. Faithfulness in little matters. Faithfulness behind the scene. Faithfulness in serving God with the whole of their heart, not just offering eye service. The Lord will help you and help me and help all of us to build a ministry that will last. And for a ministry to last, you need people, the right people, the right people, the right people. Surround yourself with the right people. Those are the ones you put in position of authority. Those are the ones you lay hands on to impart your spirit, to impart your grace. As a set man, it's important you have in your inner circle People who are seeing what you are seeing, who believe in the vision and are willing to run with it, not just those that are hunting for titles. You make a mistake as a leader when you appoint people to positions of authority simply to pacify them. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you more and more. May God give you the right people in ministry. May he give you vision assistance, destiny helpers, those that will be willing to lay down their necks for the sake of the vision. You will not lack for such people. Thank you very much for being a part of today's telecast. Please join me again next week. We're going to continue this series. And I'm trusting the Lord at the end of it all, we shall all experience explosion, enlargement in our callings and in our ministries. In Jesus' name. Leaders are readers. If your axe is blunt and you don't sharpen it, you have to work harder to use it. So said the preacher. Dr. John Akwami has put his many years of ministerial experience in books. This leadership books will help move your ministry go further, faster. Leadership would result. The minister and his ministry. Vital keys to effective ministry. The power of partnership. Leadership proverbs. The parable of the quiver. Failure is reversible. The unique role of a pastor's wife. Handbook of marriage. Call the number on your TV screen to order for your copies now.